Yeah, that's me. Well, no. Alright. That isn't me. Because that's a dick. But it's my POV. So, that's me. Shut up. At least let me finish the intro before you send this video off the rails. Anyway, you're probably wondering how I ended up in this position. Why am I standing over a sleeping man? To explain what's going on, I need to start from the beginning. You see, I am Automatitan, and there's been a running joke on this channel for ages about how one game, the game you see before you right now, is my nemesis. No need to go into that. Fine. Yes. Okay. You're right. I haven't in fact ever finished a Dishonored playthrough. Yes. I know. It's the biggest running joke on the channel. Well, that changes today. Yes, it's time to finish Dishonored and rob you of your favourite way to bully me. So settle in folks and let me tell you a tale of how I beat Dishonored as a ghostly pacifist. Subtitle guy. Shut up and play the flashback. It all began when I woke up in a cell, having been arrested for a crime I didn't commit, greeted by a man handing me food. I thought it was poison until he told me. You should eat, Corvo. This meal comes from a friend. At which point, I knew it was poison. Good point. Either way, the food had the potential of bringing me the sweet release of death, so I wolfed it down. I didn't die. This was upsetting. On the other hand, there was a note and a key, so this could lead to interesting shenanigans. So I left the cell and across the room lay a blade. It called out to me. Pick me up, Titan. Use me. Abuse me. Penetrate men with me. I resisted the urge and sent the first two guards to the land of Nod. The blade tried its siren song again. I ignored it and added a third man to the pile of dudes in my cell. Fun times were hard. Awkward times would be hard when they woke up on top of each other, but it's all in the name of love. I left for the room where the two bald men beat me and acquired a bomb, which was brilliant because it allowed me to come up with a cunning plan to escape. What? You encouraged me to be creative. Name a scenario where a bomb isn't helpful. Yeah? Well, McDonald's served breakfast past half eleven if you have a bomb, and that's good enough for me. So I made my way to the front of the prison with my new pet bomb. Choked a man out cold and almost got caught. But as I wasn't being turned into the human equivalent of Swiss cheese, it's a fairly safe bet that I hadn't. So, sent him to the never-ending land of dreams, and blew the bloody doors off. Suddenly, I felt a pang of guilt. What had I done? I might have woken everyone up. A good night's sleep is important. Still, it passed quickly. Because just like that, I was free! I was out of the joint, a free man at last. Except, they were still chasing me just because I blew their front door up. Fine, okay, I'll go hide in the sewers then. Not long after I entered the sewer, I got the pleasure of watching some guards be eaten alive. Well, it would have been a pleasure. If not for the fact that it took what felt like the length of The Last Jedi, ruining my enjoyment. Disappointed in my rat friends, I pushed on until I saw a man taking a piss, and really, in that situation, there's only one option. I choked him out and went for a swim. Shh. 
fuck. On the plus side, after my swim I met a man who went by the name of Sam. He told me he was with the men who gave me the not poison bread and key. And I work for some good people who want very much to meet you. I thanked him and he offered to take me to a bar he knew. I told him I wasn't interested. He told me it wasn't like that. Instead, he had friends that he wanted me to meet. Not gonna lie, Sam, it sounds exactly like that. Thankfully, it really wasn't like that, and the men in question really did have a plan, so I listened to what they had to say, and then went for a shower. Alone, with a firm grip on the soap. And I'm Lord Trevor Pendleton. I represent the nobility in our little group. After my shower, I had a pint and said a prayer to the dread god Mr. Stevens. I'm going to come out with you. We've been building a coalition of loyalists, aimed at ending the Lord Regent's tyranny and restoring the throne. Then went to bed, whereupon I woke up in a strange realm. Oh god, had I summoned him? Had my prayer brought forth the dread god Mr. Stevens himself? Fortunately, it was just an immortal emo who gave me a heart with a load of wires in it. I licked it! It tasted of Empress! Upon leaving the strange realm, I noticed I'd been given powers by the immortal emo, an inferior deity to the dread god Mr. Stevens. Basically, I could now blink small distances, which is a bit piss weak as superpowers go, but even Nightcrawler had to start somewhere, right? I went downstairs to talk to Sam's friends, only to find that they were drinking at 9am, although as good fortune, or lack of a tab behind the bar would have it, the leader was sober enough to tell me that I would soon be seeing an old friend. Well, assuming that old friend means one of the bald men who betrayed me, and I'm going to be honest, I almost regret becoming a pacifist because I would have murdered that bellend in a heartbeat. That's a story for later though, because I decided to take a small detour. See, it wasn't my first time in Dunwall, and as such, I wanted to try my luck with something. I'd decided to be a ghost, and I was adamant about not killing anyone. So, could I beat the game with those parameters and still be able to complete this questline? Oi! I'm beating the game, subtitle guy. We saw at the beginning that I pretty much have. You're planning something, aren't you? I don't trust you. Anyway, I made my way to Granny Rags, a blind patron of the Outsider. She even had a shrine dedicated to the Immortal Emo, and obviously I had to desecrate it before speaking to her. Serves her right for serving the wrong god. All hail the dread god Mr. Stevens. While I spoke to her, she said she had some things for me to do. First was to make use of my expertise in the worlds of the stealthy shadow with stealth shadow. Um, piss off. So it took a few tries, kiss my ass. Anyway, second, she wanted me to visit the office of a doctor to acquire some juicy, juicy rat viscera. Yum. While I was there, I saw a guard get scolded by his future wife. Poor bastard. He's got a shit life waiting for him. So I couldn't help but smile. Anyway, I knocked out the guards and admired their sleeping bodies like some creepy stalker before visiting the distillery run by a local thug called Slackjaw to complete part two of this little task. Early in the distillery I thought I'd been caught, but as my body didn't suddenly gain air conditioning, I had to conclude that I hadn't been. A few minutes later, and the distillery's elixir was now contaminated with sweet, sweet rat viscera, and back to Granny I went. The old bird gave me some birthday gifts and offered a little... extra. No wonder she had so many gentlemen callers. I refused and went on my way. Why are you like this? I have no words. Literally none. Oh no, you don't get to corrupt my narrative. Oh ha ha, 
Anyway, shut up, I managed to fuck up Overseer Campbell by branding him as a heretic and the sinner, didn't I? He even deserved it. He brought the seven scriptures on a daily basis. Anyway, speaking of sinning, it's time to go to the House of Pleasure. Two reasons, one of which was to remove two people from play and the other to rescue Emily. I mean, they didn't say I couldn't, but there were more pressing matters. I just told you, rescue Emily and eliminate two dudes. I didn't go straight to the Golden Cat anyway, because I've renounced my bloodthirsty ways as you saw when I branded the face of Bald Man number one. And in order to keep up my facade of becoming a pacifist, I needed to see a man about an art dealer. Can you not? That's what they get Why? Because it's funny. Yes, I know. <sighs> anyway, I ventured into Slatjaw's territory to talk about an art dealer. I briefly wondered if he knew it was me who ruined his Alexa, but I didn't get murdered to fuck, so I think I got away with it. When I spoke to the man, he had me go look for one of his missing dudes. Sort of, you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours kind of thing. By which I mean, a favour for a favour. Oi, this is premium content this is. Anyhow, I left the distillery and noticed there were assassins about, so I took them down with the good old night night dart and returned to the doctor's offices, only to find that Slatjaw's man was dead. Thankfully though, Slatjaw is a man of his word, unlike some title guy. Fuck you! Can we get through the rest of this section without you insulting me? You're literally Cartman, you know that. Now that I've found Slatjaw's man, albeit as a corpse, I gained the quicker way to the cat house and the promise from Slatjaw that if I could get a safe call from an art dealer, my targets would simply disappear. Well, works for me. You're just salty you couldn't come with me to the bordello. And speaking of the bordello, once I was in there, finding the art dealer wasn't too difficult. Dude was alone, in a dark room, waiting for... a professional. I took her place, only to learn that he's a much bigger pervert than even subtitle guy. I also learned that he'd been scamming the men that were soon to disappear. And this pleased me like the electricity that was running through his veins. What? That's good. I deserve that. What the fuck ever? Anyway, once he'd struck sticky white oil, the game was afoot. I shocked him again. Then once more after that, and the cord was mine. But before I left, curiosity struck me, so I dropped a save and shocked him one more time. He didn't die. Since I didn't have any way to transport my oily bounty, I had to leave a lot of profit behind. So bugger it. Time to find Emily and be on my way. She was in the courtesan's dorms and was happy to see me. And so I made my way back to Slatjaw and then onward to Sam. Oh, and on my way back to Slatjaw, I got propositioned again by Madame Rags, before getting mugged off by a weeper. So, that was fun. Handed the cord off to Slatjaw, alert that I'd just ordered the twins to be kidnapped and shaved, to have both their teeth and tongues removed, and to be put to work in their own minds. And, neither of them was dead, so I was definitely still a pacifist. Which brilliantly, does not preclude me from being a complete bastard to literally everyone! Nice! Double nice! Terror and chaos be upon him! Anyway, went back to the pub and was denied the celebratory pint because the future traitors had a new mission for me. Indeed I am, my friend. While they did deny me my pint, 
It meant that I finally got to do something I've never done before in Dishonored. I found my soulmate! I'd never encountered this man in any of my past runs of the game, which saddens me, but at least I finally found him. He was stark raving fucking bonkers, you see. He walked from one side of his apartment to another, ranting into the void, and I was enraptured. I must have sat and listened to him for half an hour. Not as yet, no. Unfortunately, I had a mission to complete, otherwise the rest of this video would have been me sitting here, listening to him for about three days. So, with regret, I climbed into his bedsit, choked him out and nicked the rune off of his shrine. I'm sorry Dave, but I needed your rune to fulfil a lifelong dream of mine. And that's where my enjoyment of that mission took a serious blow, because the city security had for some reason been tripled, and they started employing my favourite machines in all of Dishonored. The Pylon, a machine so ruthless that it won't even stop when I use the art dealer's safe word. Fortunately, this is where Dave's rune came into play. With the rune of Dave, I had enough to purchase an ability that would allow me to fulfill a lifelong dream and bypass the now upgraded security. Because, you see, I had a plan. A completely sound, a logical plan. When you consider the bridge is full of guards and pylons, this plan is logical. I became a fish. It worked. It worked. Why? Look, they exist alongside hover cars in Back to the Future, and hover cars exist in Blade Runner, so hoverboards must also exist. Quid pro quo. You don't know that! <laughs> now that I've both achieved a lifelong dream of mine and pissed off subtitle guy at the same time, I was feeling rather good, so I decided to share the joy. I thought I'd do a good deed and free a man imprisoned by the corrupt city watch. After all, he was offering some pearls in exchange for his freedom. We can split him right down the middle. I thought you'd fucked now, off. That's not even remotely close to what I said. That's not necessarily a pearl necklace. <sighs> I didn't get the pearls anywhere. Bastard turned on me and tried to end my life once he was in the clear. So I aborted that timeline like an unwanted ginger fetus and made my way to Sokolov's estate. Once I got there, however, I realised something. I didn't have any of my sleepy time darts. I was out of Flunitrazepam, which meant I had to give the poor man a love hug from behind. He deserved it, really, because he was keeping our last name subject 312 in a cage. Thank you, whoever you are. He kept me in a cage. As it turned out, the loyalists had a plan for him. They put him in a cage and started to pump him for information, which, to be fair, was originally his plan with that lass. So points knocked off for originality, lads. Havelock wanted to unleash some bloodthirsty angry rats on Sokolov, but since he hadn't technically wronged me in any way, I found a different and arguably better way by tracking down Piero, the dude who was supplying me my gear, and learning that he's a peeping Tom. I found him watching a maid have a bath. Using this information, I blackmailed the pervert in exchange for some fine wine. Wine so fine that it apparently tastes like rat piss. Why do people drink this stuff? 
Returning to Havelock and the caged Sokolov, I traded my newly acquired piss wine for information. Information that was less helpful than we wanted, but it still counts. Sokolov didn't know the identity of our next target by name or face, but rather... Well, he knew the identity of our next target by booty alone. Apparently she had the finest hindquarters in the Empire. You see, our next target was Lady Boyle, but the issue was that she had two sisters, who were also called Lady Boyle, and who presumably all had nice asses, what with them being triplets and everything. Still, they were hosting a shindig, so that was our opportunity to do the dastardly deed. We're there to work, not pick up wenches. <sighs> As with every other mission, Sam dropped us off just out of sight of a city watch patrol, which was being done by the newest addition to their arsenal, the tall boy. We're not calling them long, long boys. Long, long boys. Did you really need to use your dub title voice though? Really though? I hate you. Getting back to the mission, I decided that I didn't want to risk interfering with the tall boy, and so I took the only logical course of action available to me. I became... A fish, and made my way into the manor through the sewer. After drying myself off and sticking some deodorant on, I went to mingle with the guests. No guests I mean, it was a party after all. If I wanted to blend in, I pretty much had to get roaring drunk and piss in the no volavants. Unfortunately, a strange man interrupted my attempts at revelry by telling me he knew of my intentions. It began to look like I'd have to break my vow of pacifism, but fortunately, he just wanted to help us by providing a better way. Well, I say a better way, but I'm not sure better is quite the right word, because one of the three boils is about to be kidnapped by me, and handed over to a strange man by me, before she presumably would be used as a sex slave for the rest of her natural life. But before any of that could happen, I had to partake in the annoying party game known as Guess Which Boils Are About To Get Fucked Over. Speaking to them didn't help, so I poked some title guy and requested... ...requested that he be a good little minion and help me figure out the quickest way to do this mission. Once he'd done his job I discovered that I needed to talk to Miss White. Shut up. Who was wearing a mask that makes subtitle guy look like Scarlett Johansson? She identified my target and the subterfuge could begin. So, I walked over to her and informed her that someone wanted her dead. Where was the subterfuge you might ask? Well simple, I didn't tell her it was me. I also didn't tell her that she would hereafter belong to a strange and not at all creepy man for the rest of her natural life. What she didn't know wouldn't hurt her. Well, not for a while at least anyway, and I'd be back in the pub by then, so really, did a moral wrong take place at all. Surprisingly, she didn't react the way I was expecting, and instead thought that it was a FANTASTIC idea to follow me down to the cellar. If only all my marks were this eager to get fucked over. So, chucked her out and delivered to her new mask. Who's... Captor? Best not to think about it, really. That moral wrong definitely didn't happen and wasn't done by me in any case. Fuck you, guest book, pub. And once I got there, the loyalists told me that it was time to finish this, to rain down furious vengeance on the baldy bastard who started this. And while I did want him dead, this game has taught us that sometimes death is the preferable option. We disgraced a religious leader. We consigned two businessmen to a life of torture in their own slave mine. We kidnapped a man and put him in a cage. We tricked a woman into a life of servitude. And now, 
It was time to see what type of punishment we'd be inflicting on the Lord Regent. It was time to enact non-lethal regicide. I had a pint and said my prayers to the dread god Mr. Stevens and made my way back to Dunwall Tower where I took a moment to admire the design of the whole place. I know literally nothing about architecture, but I've always had a fondness for the twisted cityscape that is Dunwall. I blinked across the courtyard and broke into the tower proper, where I saw two guards talking to Baldy Bastard on a TV. Wait, they had a TV? Why had I never noticed this before? I need the comfort of my own bed tonight. Once the conversation was done and the guards returned to their routines of spouting nonsense to each other as they do their rounds, I made my way into the regent's quarters and stole his pawn collection. It was filthy, but I won't kink shame. Well, yes, fine, I was planning to, I grant you, but the guy at the broadcast tower told me how to get incriminating evidence on Baldy, which would put him in jail along with killing his political career. I mean, yeah, that was probably going to be even better than a video of someone pissing on him, so fuck it, I went with that. So, incriminating evidence. Will be. The audiograph card you want is in a safe in the Lord Regent's room, but I was able to see the combination over his shoulder. Nine three five. Wait, Trust really? Me, what's recorded on Back to Baldy's quarters then, because in a fit of hubris, the moron kept a recording of his confession in his personal safe, which I naturally nicked and broadcast to the Empire. Learn from this, future bastards. Don't keep incriminating evidence. Burn it. It's a smart thing to do. Also, don't get pissed on by prozzies from Karnaka. You dirty, dirty bastards. Still, the deed was done and the non-lethal regicide was complete. The regent was disgraced and so I returned to the pub for the final celebratory prayer and a pint with a side order of sudden but inevitable betrayal. You move like you've been drinking. Poison work its magic? Is he dead? It better be. And with that out of the way, we learnt that Sam was truly a good man, for he saved our life. By only giving us half the poison the traitors wanted him to. I would have preferred not being poisoned, but what can you do? He saved us, put us on a raft, and proceeded to run for the hills. I can't say I blame him. Because the poor bastard was clearly going to be next on the chopping block. Once he'd been my body, and Mama Beechworth didn't raise no fools. So, time to visit the flooded district, the plague ridden lair of Dode, the Master Assassin, where I immediately got caught by Dode, the Master Assassin. You might be wondering why I put emphasis on Master Assassin. Don't worry, you'll find out why shortly. It was funny as fuck. Anyway, don't toss my gear and put me in a cage. I hate cages. They're coarse and irritating and they get everywhere. Also, the immortal emo visited me, but I ignored him for he was not the dread god Mr. Stevens. I then became a rat, which then became a fish, which then became a man. Time to make my escape, for I had a cunning plan. A cunning plan? for which I needed the gear dough tossed. When I got to where he'd stashed it, I felt a wave of happiness wash over me. Why? Well, remember our first target? The religious leader we disgraced. Yeah, he was right here skulking around near my gear. So I got to fuck him over again! I sent him to Dreamland and made my way to Dode's stronghold where, due to a glitch, I was engulfed in darkness. Oh no, why didn't I believe them when they told me it would make me go blind? So, I rebooted the universe, and the dread god Mr. Stevens did say, Let there be candles, for thou can fuck off if thou think of I'm making thou a new son, dost thou think of I am made of money? This concerned me, for I thought the church of the dread god Mr. Stevens was doing well. It seems I was wrong. Anyway, I took a risk and ran through the area outside Dode's office, 
which was knee deep in. No! Assassins! And not one of them saw me. Seriously, what the fuck? How did you all miss the man with the school mask on and his wanking hand on fire? I'd say, dude, the master assassin needs better recruits, but considering what happened next, I think he needs to retire. I invaded his office, and as he was talking to a subordinate about my escape, complimenting me on outdoing his top men, as I snuck behind him and hid under a desk, a sudden real world issue hit me. I badly needed a piss. That he knows your work. I returned to find that somehow, bafflingly, the master assassin still hadn't found me hiding under his coffee table. I mean, how? What fucking lack standards did Dunwall have for him to be a master assassin? Precisely how many regions did he nosh off to get the job? Anyway, I took three steps forward, nicked his keys, and buggered off. I wish I could have seen his reaction to realising I outstealthed him. Me, a complete half-wit. It's just a shame it all went wrong when I darted a guard while escaping, and the selfish prick cracked his head open and died. One universal reset later, and I was back on course, into the sewers. After walking for a bit, I encountered one of Slackjaw's minions. It looked hurt, thus signalling that it was time to finish the Granny Rags questline that I hadn't forgotten I'd started. Honest. I hope this wouldn't ruin my ghostly run, but it was a chance I had to take. You see, Granny wanted to sacrifice Slackjaw, but Slackjaw, being selfish, wanted to live. I have no quarrel with either of these characters, but alas, I had to pick a side. I chose to side with Slackjaw, not because I'm against human sacrifice. I mean, I'd sacrifice sometimes a guy for a slice of pizza. No. It was because I needed to remain unseen by hostile entities to actually finish this ghost run, and Granny was blind. Quid pro quo. However, before I made my choice, I had a quick chat with Granny. There's my love. Are you ready to help get Slackjaw's bones? Granny has some birthday gifts for you. I've been saving them up in case you ever came back to me. That confirmed the suspicion that had been forming. Madame Rags was fucking mental. I choked her out and started the encounter, whereupon she turned into a horde of hungry rats and ran away, which I feel wasn't very sporting. So back to Slapjaw for him to tell me how to kill the mad bint by burning her cameo. Yes, in order to defeat what would appear to be an eldritch abomination, I needed to burn a wooden pendant finger. That's very close to my idea of logic. I disapprove. But I burned the cameo anyway, and she became powerless. Just a frail old lady. Harmless. And dead! Pub time. Oh, that'll be all the long, long boys then. No wonder the traitors had already scarpered. I took my time on this mission, sitting back and listening to some guards. Some had heard that I'd been kept in a cage, only to be set free at night. Fairly certain I would have been an easier kill had that been the case. The same guard also said he wanted to fight me. A fight I wouldn't take. Not worth my time, really, when I had betrayers to spank. So, I returned to my old room to find a note from M telling me where I needed to go. Now all I had to do was signal Sam. Time for our final ride together. It was an absolute pleasure, my dude. I'm glad you were here. At the end of all things. Once we arrived at the aisle, we said our goodbyes, and I surveyed the land seeing about seven guards, two pylons, two walls of light, a few overseers with anti-magic music boxes, and a partridge, or possibly some kind of gross in some form of fruit tree. This was going to be tough. Or it would have been, if not for the fact I found a rock I could climb that connected to a wire, which allowed me to bypass this entire section. Apparently, 
whatever tip me down, uh, Master Assassin, was also in charge of the security arrangements. But enough playing around. Havelock was near, and it was time to show him that he picked the wrong man to piss off. A few more men sent to Dreamland, a key claimed in the name of Victory, and it was time. Justice will be served tonight, Havelock. After all this time, I'd done it. I'd stayed out of sight and I'd shed no blood. Apart from running rags, obviously. But she was a rat monster, so she doesn't count. Also, she was blind, so she never saw me coming. But finally, it was time. Havelock was in my sight. I let loose one final sleep dart, and it was done. Havelock was beaten, and so was the game. I had beaten Dishonored. So just one thing left to do. Walk forward, press the interaction button, and let the game register that I finally finished it on the channel. Oh, I don't think so. Some type of drive? What the fuck? Oh, come on, you knew I wasn't going to let you do this. What are you doing? I am not going to let you burn down what we took so long building up. What the fuck are you talking about? You said it yourself in the intro. You see, I am Automatitan, and there's been a running joke on this channel for ages. What? I will not let you ruin my favourite running joke on the entire channel. Are you on glue? If I let you do this, I can never use that joke again, and I am fucked if I'm writing new material for you. Oh, come on. You're seriously this pissed off about having to do work? Come on, it'll be fun. We can come up with new and exciting running jokes. We don't need the old material. You think you can solve this by making new and innovative content? Yes. On YouTube? Piss. <laughs>